Hi everyone, in this video we'll be going through two types of reactions, synthesis and decomposition, and this is our syllabus dot point. So synthesis is a fairly common type of reaction, and it involves the reaction between chemicals to form a larger compound. So the general equation for synthesis is A plus B is going to produce AB. We should all remember what a synthesis reaction is, as the act of synthesizing something is the act of formation. So we are forming a larger compound. Synthesis is not limited by the type of bonds which are formed, and it's applicable for both the formation of ionic or covalent substances. Furthermore, they're not limited to the formation of a binary compound like AB. You can also form a ternary or a quaternary compound. So here's an example of the formation of the compound AB2C from AB and BC. Also, synthesis reactions are exothermic reactions because they are forming bonds. So in this example, we have a reaction between hydrogen gas and nitrogen gas to produce ammonia. We should write a balanced equation for this reaction. Let's begin by writing out our equation. So we have H2, we know that hydrogen is gas, plus N2, nitrogen also gas, which is going to produce ammonia, which is also in the gaseous state. To balance our equation, first off, uh, we'll do nitrogen, so we put 2 here. We have 6 hydrogens, meaning that we put a 3 out here. So we should look at the reaction and consider what processes are being involved in the synthesis of this compound ammonia. Reaction will involve the rearrangement of elements, meaning that in the beginning the bonds that are going to be holding together the hydrogen and the bonds holding together the nitrogen gas must have been broken. Then in the process of creating the ammonia, we have the formation of covalent bonds between the separated nitrogen and hydrogen particles to form ammonia. And the formation of these covalent bonds is exothermic. So similarly, let's consider this next reaction. Calcium oxide reacts with water to form calcium hydroxide. So let's write our equation, CaO, this is solid, plus water, H2O, is forming calcium hydroxide, and since it is in water, it is going to be aqueous. So in order for the calcium hydroxide to have formed in this equation here, there's going to be a breaking of ionic bonds in the calcium oxide's ionic lattice and the breaking of the covalent bonds between the bonds in water. Then finally, in order to reform this aqueous calcium oxide, there must be a formation of ion dipole forces between the separated ions from this ionic substance and this covalent substance to form a new compound. This process is covered in more detail in the dissolution of ionic substances video. So decomposition reaction is the opposite of a synthesis reaction. Where synthesis refers to the formation of a new substance or new compound, decomposition is where the reacting compound breaks down into smaller products. So we start off with AB, our binary compound, and that gets split up into A plus B. Similar to synthesis reaction, a decomposition reaction is not limited to a binary compound. It can also be the breakdown of a ternary compound. So ABC can turn into any combination of AB and C, AB plus C, or AC plus B. Decomposition reactions are going to generally require a large amount of energy. This is because it is necessary to break covalent and or ionic bonds which hold together the compounds. Since it involves the breaking of bonds, decomposition is an endothermic process. The thermal decomposition of gold oxide, thermal being heat related, is demonstrated in this equation below. So we have 2Au2O3, which is gold oxide, and that's being heated up to decompose into gold and oxygen gas. So let's talk about what's going on in this reaction here. We have an ionic compound, which when subject to thermal energy, is going to break the gold and oxygen into their individual particles. The particles of gold are then going to metallically bond to one another to form the gold metal lattice, and then the covalent bonds of the oxygen are going to form to create the oxygen gas. Now similarly, we can use light energy for photolysis, which is the breakdown of a compound using light energy. In this example, our silver bromide is subject to light, which over time severs the bonds in the ionic lattice and turns that compound into silver and bromine particles. 
Similarly, the silver particles are going to metallically bond to one another, and the bromine particles are going to form covalent bonds. Let's consider the electrolysis of water. Water has a chemical formula, H2O. Electrolysis is the decomposition of water through the use of electrical energy. We flow a current through the water, which then severs the bonds, the covalent bonds, which hold together the hydrogen and oxygen in water. These separated particles will then reform covalent bonds to create hydrogen and oxygen gas. So in this example, we have the thermal decomposition of calcium carbonate to form carbon dioxide and calcium oxide. So we can write our equation, calcium carbonate, CaCO3, solid, is being thermally decomposed into calcium oxide, CaO, and also carbon dioxide gas. So in this reaction, the ionic bonds of the calcium carbonate lattice are being broken down and reforming ionic bonds in the calcium oxide lattice, also covalent bonds in the carbon dioxide gas. For this next equation, iron 3 hydroxide is heated in a thermal decomposition reaction to produce iron 3 oxide and water. Write a balanced chemical equation for this reaction. So our reaction is given as Fe, and since it's 3 hydroxide, OH3, this is aqueous, and we are decomposing it into iron 3 oxide and water. So what's happening in this case is we have the heating of the aqueous hydroxide. The heating of this is separating the ion dipole forces, which are formed by the hydration of iron and hydroxide ions in solution. From there, the water molecules are reforming covalent bonds to turn into steam, while the iron and the oxygen are forming ionic bonds to create the iron oxide compound.